So the next model that we're going to look at is Newton's law of cooling. Um, differential equation looks something like this. And if you think about it for a minute, minute this makes some sense as a model, right? It says that the rate at which your temperature is going to change is proportional to the difference between the ambient temperature and the temperature of your object, right? Um, so this is telling you that a, you know, a hot object placed in a cold room should cool off. Cold object placed in a warm environment should, should warm up, right? Um, if your object has the same temperature as its environment, its temperature is not going to change. It's going to stay at the environment temperature. Uh, so all that makes sense. Uh, the constant, of course, that has to be determined experimentally. It's going to depend on a number of factors, um, things like the surface area of the object, the size of the object, things like that, right? Um, for, for something like a pot of coffee, right? Uh, the pot, a large pot, is going to take longer to cool off than a cup. All right, so the, the volume, these sorts of things, um, they all factor into determining that constant k. Right? Um, also, don't worry if you can't remember the order here. Is it a minus t? Is it t minus a? If you get it wrong, that's fine. It's just going to change the sign of your constant. Right? So either way, you're good. Now, this, this equation here can easily be solved. Right? It's separable. Um, 1 over a minus t dt is equal to k d little t, right? So minus natural log absolute value of a minus t is equal to k t plus c. We do the usual trick, right? We want to deal with the absolute value here. Um, so we take e of both sides, deal with that minus sign. So we should maybe bring that over. Um, so if we take that minus sign and bring it to the other side, that's minus. It's still a constant. We can leave that as a C if we want, make that a plus. So A minus T will be E to the minus KT uh, times E to the C, but we'll, we'll bring that around and we'll do something like that, like say an initial temperature, right? Um, so uh, T, if we solve for T, move T over, bring that to the other side, T will be A minus T naught E to the minus K times T, okay? Um, now, this is maybe not exactly the initial temperature because um, if t is equal to zero, you actually get a minus t naught. Um, we can fiddle around with those, those constants if you want, but you can, get, you can get that form there. This is going to do the job, right? For solving this problem, we can do it. There are lots of ways you could tinker to maybe factor, you know, get that so you do actually get the initial temperature when t is equal to zero. So you probably would want to replace this with like a or t naught minus a, something like that. Anyway, um, that is what you'd want. Let's, let's leave it like that, though. Um, now, here's a, here's a problem that we try to solve with this model. Uh, so we've got our pot of coffee. We put it on the counter. It's 200 degrees. Three minutes later, we know that it's cooled down to 190. Um, we're willing to drink it once it hits 165, so we're going to try to figure out just how long that's going to take. Right? So this initial information here, that's going to let us figure out the value of k. Uh, once again, since we already kind of solved the equation in general, we don't have to go back to the differential equation. We can use the result and put in the values, right? So let's work through that. So first part, right? Let's find, find the value of k, OK? So how are we going to do that? Ah, well, we do kind of have to work a little bit here, right? First thing we do is let's, let's get that initial constant, okay? T of zero, as I've written it, is A minus that constant T naught, right? T is equal to zero. This just becomes one. Um, and let me see. A is equal to 72. So 72 minus T naught. And we know that the initial temperature is 200. 
So that tells me that this T naught should be, if we move that over, subtract that, uh, we're going to get minus, right, 72 minus 200, so we get minus 128. Okay? All right. So T, as a function of T, we have 72 plus 128 e to the minus kt. Okay, so far so good. Next step, let's get k. We know that t of 3 is 190, right? So 190 is equal to 72 plus 128 e to the 3 k. We're putting t equal to 3 minutes here. Okay, so we subtract 190 minus 72. We're going to get 118, right? Make sure. Keep an eye on my arithmetic. 118 is equal to 128e to the minus 3k. Okay, so e to the minus 3k is 118 over 128. Take the log of both sides, divide by minus 3. So k, k will be minus 1 over 3 times the natural log of 118 over 128. Um, if you don't like that minus sign out front, remember that minus sign applied to a logarithm is essentially a reciprocal, so we can always write this as 1 over 3 times the log of 128 over 118. And we can, of course, we can simplify that a little bit, right? We can factor out a 2 if we want to reduce the fraction, but let's leave it like that. Okay, so there's my k. Now that I've got k, I can come back and I can answer this question. How long is it going to take my coffee to reach 165 degrees Fahrenheit? Well, let's see. So, when does T of T equal to 165? So, 165 will be equal to 72 plus 128. I know I already found k, but let me just still write it as a guess k, because that takes less time to write. Um, so 165, we've got to subtract 72. That gets us to, what is that, 93. Right? 93 is 128 e to the minus kt. So e to the minus kt is 93 over 128, so minus kt is the natural log. Oh, and if we want to get rid of the minus again, we can flip it over. Natural log of 128 over 93. And so to solve for t, we should divide by k. All right. So that means that t will be, so dividing by this, we multiply by the 3. And then we have this log, 128 over 93, divided by that one, 128 over 118. And to be honest with it, a calculator, I have no idea what that value is. It's worked out in the textbook. We can check there and find out exactly how many minutes it's going to take to, uh, to cool off our coffee. I forgot to check what that value is, but that's okay. If you're watching this video in the textbook, you've got the answer sitting right there. You can take a look.